has the High Court spoiled its night out? Electronic actors, are they putting film stars out of work? Computers in the arts, what's left for people to do? Preparations for the Royal Film premiere were still going ahead this afternoon, in spite of growing doubts that the occasion would take place as planned. The manager of the Enterprise Cinema in London's Leicester Square said that until instructed to the contrary, he would continue to expect the royal couple to arrive on schedule. Stringent security was called for after reports that an organisation calling itself the Choir of a Thousand may try to stop the film being shown. A spokesman for the police would not confirm or deny that threats had been received, but said that the security forces were prepared to deal with any trouble. The Choir of a Thousand opposes the use of computer technology in the arts. It claims that the film Time Walk has broken a long-standing agreement in the film industry that all purely computer-generated characters should be labelled as such. Time Walk. They came out of the past. They brought terror into the present. There was only one way to stop them. To travel back into the past and destroy them. to have been a big night tonight. The royal film premiere of a new movie, Time Walk. Technically, it's the most ambitious film ever. Everybody says it marks the rebirth of the British film industry. It's all gone rather wrong. The High Court has granted an injunction to actor David Wise, the star of Time Walk, to stop any public showing of the film on television or in the cinema until its legal position is clarified. A solicitor acting on behalf of the star said the court had agreed that the law was unclear and that opportunity should be given for legal argument to be heard. Until then, all public performance would be suspended. My client has been advised that an actor has a commercial interest not only in his performance but also in his actual physical appearance. It is an infringement of those rights for a third person to create and display a computer-generated representation of the actor's performance without his consent. So the stars happy, and the police are happy. They won't have to worry about maintaining public order and protecting the VIPs in the face of threats of disruption by the choir of a thousand. And the choir of a thousand are happy. It's a victory in their campaign to keep technology out of the arts. The only player in the whole drama who can't be happy about the way things turned out is the producer. And he'll get over it. All I asked for were a few tiny changes in his performance in four scenes. And he wouldn't. Or maybe he couldn't. I mean, who's in charge of the film? Who pays for it? The actor or the producer? Now, at the end of the day, if I'd had to reshoot that scene, I'd have had to reconstruct the set, recall all the crew, all the extras, costumes, makeup, I would have put another million on the budget. All I did was make a few electronic changes to get the effect I wanted. Big deal. And what's so terrible about that? The real revolution of the information age will not be one of hardware, but of the human spirit. 
In the information age, it's machines which serve people. People are not asked to serve anymore. In a thousand automated factories, a million robots, intelligent but mindless, faithfully follow every order to the letter. In a thousand company head offices, a million computer workstations, silent but obedient, wait with infinite patience for their next instruction. Only in the arts must we still depend on unpredictable and unreliable human powers in music, painting, drama, dance. And now that's changing too. What can we do to change it, Irene? Uh, resolve loop or resynthesize it? Well, that's basic sounds all right. How long would resynthesis take then? Hours. Mm -hmm. We should have used real musicians. Well, they say that's the price of progress. Yeah. So this is my world, and welcome to it. Your future is whatever you choose to make it. I should remind you, though, you've already taken quite a few steps along the path that leads to here. In the beginning, the computer's creations were basic and crude, no more than you would expect of a machine. But we learn to teach it clever tricks. Let me tell you the rumor about a day of children. Let me tell you the rumor about a day of children. And slowly we learn to write the rules to simulate creation. Rules for creating by computer are well known, but we don't know how to make the computer evaluate what it produces. Now we've discovered ways to feed machines with the contents of our own imagination. <sighs> and profit to be had in offering the public constant stimulation. If I make a movie about space, they want to see Saturns outside the window. They demand landscapes that couldn't exist outside their imagination. In Xanadu did Kubla Khan the stately pleasure dome decree, where Alf the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man down to a sunless sea. They want action that involves impossible machines and simple people. And how else can I give them what they want without using whatever technology can give me? That is the genius of the modern magic lantern. Your every wish is its command. Manipulate the input, change the parameters, modify the algorithm. And you can be sure of getting what you like in the style you like it, whenever you like it. It's clear that in order to produce a work of art that is in some way interesting and worthwhile, you have to have a system, whether it being a human artist or a computer, um, that has two things. It has skill about how to generate the work of art draw the picture or whatever. And second, that it has a great deal of knowledge about the world so that the, the art can be about something that is interesting to us human beings. And it's clear that we can produce computers that have both of those. And so there's every reason to believe that we can make computers produce interesting works of art. <laughs> There was trouble at the Hemsworth Fine Art Gallery in Dover Street today when a man armed with a hatchet tried to break past security guards and attack the pictures. The gallery owner said that though the pictures were computer generated, they were irreplaceable, since the chances of the machine producing the same image twice were billions to one against. When arrested, 
the intruder claimed to belong to the organization known as the Choir of a Thousand. Harold Cohen was an English painter, he was a traditional painter originally, who went to California and got involved in the artificial intelligence scene there. And he started to produce a computer program that would draw pictures and would have some sort of connection to reality. And he gave the computer concepts about lines, objects, about the fact that one thing, when it is in front of another, obstructs the view of it. And what's the difference between up and down? What's the, the idea of one object sitting on top of another? And he produced a computer program called Aaron uh, that was producing something quite unlike anything that had been possible before. I can program all my instruments to produce electronic music with the help of computers. as a composer that that's tedious and irrelevant. I think it's much more interesting to actually use the resources of a computer working as a, a thinking object which is assisting you with aspects of its intelligence which you can control and manipulate to generate compositions um, which are actually using the resources of the machine to develop new styles and new approaches to composition. So I can use a computer program, I need only specify a couple of points to start off at limit, a couple of points to finish limit, and then the computer can fill up all the gaps in between. And that can even be extended further so that the computer itself is choosing the limits and building up long chains of shaped sets of sound. And that can apply not only to how high or low the notes are, but also how long the notes are, whether there's lots of them or a few of them, how dense the resulting sound is, um, and the sort of types of sound which are being used to play those notes. In a world where ultimate reality resides in the circuits of machines, people have to learn to think like machines. They have to learn to behave like machines. They have to learn to feel like machines and respond to experience like machines. It's the computer arts which are teaching us how. In the past, the arts laid claim to reflect the lives and values of the people. The image in the mirror was distorted by the artist's human imagination. Who these days wants to explore reality? Who wants to see what actually surrounds us now? Isn't there more beauty and more value to be found in the exacting mathematics of the machine? Fire broke out at the online music centre in London's Dockland this morning. The centre, which pipes computer music direct to shops and other public places, has been completely destroyed. The fire brigade says that arson was the only possible cause. The choir of a thousand who oppose the use of computers in the arts say that they were not responsible for the outrage it was no surprise if people were being forced to take the law into their own hands. The organization is stepping up its drive to recruit new members. So what are the issues that face the choir of a thousand? Are they political? Are they social? Are they religious? Or is it just the control of a technology fallen into the wrong hands? In some ways it's liberating, in some ways it's threatening. I wouldn't want to be thrown out of work any more than anybody else. But I happen to think that my kind of creative edge is that much greater 
than any computer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, technology is neither liberating nor imprisoning. It's de it, depending on who owns the technology. It's and fewer and fewer people own it. And therefore, they remain in work. And is that true? Luckily, we're surely more and more, more people own it. The way that, that things no, are going. No, more and more people don't own the technology. More and more people own the toys the technology produces. More and more people do not own the technology that produces things that other people want. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Manual work into machine work. Machine work into paperwork. Paperwork into electronic simulations of work. Divorced from any human purposes except those that further the power system. What can you say to a human poet, painter, or musician? When now a computer can write you a novel, poem, piece of music, make you a print, painting, sculpture, or just possibly something we haven't even thought of yet. And you can see it very early on. You can see it certainly in the 1970s and 80s when we did generate music. We found that session musicians and then orchestras weren't needed. The conductor wasn't needed anymore. You didn't need anyone intervening between that composer, new or old, and the bit of music you were playing anymore. And it was only in, in live performances of theatre and live performances of ballet and dance that any form of real art actually existed. But even now, that is fading away, because it is so much easier to watch it either on your video screen at home or in some form of other cinema, because nowadays you can actually have Nureyev brought back to you in a ballet. It's just been recreated. So the, the whole essence of the, the soul and the spirit of a nation, of a person, representing art, representing the soul of people, has gone. At last, an age-old dream is realized. Art is for all. You don't have to be rich or fashionable, educated or intelligent. The audience is everybody now because art is infinitely repeatable and cheap. It's cheap enough to have music, pictures, poems in every supermarket, airport terminal, every restaurant, pub, club, church, dentist waiting room. Wherever the public go, a need to be pacified, excited, amused, uplifted. Unlike people, machines never question their orders. You 
musicians. I'm glad to have seen the back of them. And the same goes for writers and painters. I'm running a business here, not a, not a rest home for antisocial misfits. If I'd wanted to work with drunks or dope smokers or people who were in trouble with the police, I'd have been a social worker. And I, I don't like having to argue the toss with my employees all the time. Artistic integrity, emotional expression, it's, a, it's all bullshit. Art is just another product. People want to buy, I want to sell. Hey, let's go crazy. <laughs> We're talking about something different, we're talking about physical presence, aren't we? You, know, you go to Amsterdam and you go to look at Van Gogh paintings because you want to see the actual physical presence of that picture and it's not the same as having a, a glossy coffee table picture book. Because it seems to possess something which is so far as we know the machine does not yet possess, which is a soul. If you think about it, the ideal form of film is the cartoon because everything that appears on the screen is totally under the control of the filmmaker. He doesn't actually have to find a thing to photograph. He can generate something out of his own imagination. If you think about a field of grass, the usual way of making it would be to draw every blade individually, which takes a very long time. Um, if you simply give the computer one blade of grass and say, copy it a million times, it will look absurdly unrealistic but if you tell the computer here is a sort of generalized blade of grass draw a million of them but make each one slightly different according to a random formula then you can produce a field of grass that looks amazingly realistic it's all crap and horse manure a painter's not interested merely in the surface appearance of things i'm seeking the inner truth but isn't the machine just another tool for an artist to use, like a more flexible brush? The only person who'd say something like that, somebody who's never held a brush in their life. You can't distance yourself from the image. All a computer produces is a crass electronic cartoon. How so? Well, canvas, paper, they're not just surfaces to make marks on. A painting, a drawing, not just lines on a piece of paper. The whole thing has to be a complete entity. Or would you prefer it in the words of Thomas Traherne? You'll never enjoy the world aright till the sea itself flows in your veins, till you're clothed with the heavens and crowned with the stars. The computer is a very different technology from those that artists have always used. And it's different because it requires the artist to instruct it to produce the work of art, rather than the artist combining their emotional skills, their intellectual skills, their physical skills, and being a vehicle through which their human spirit is being communicated, to one in which they're having to separate out lots of those things by having to change their center, center of, of, uh, of attention and focusing on instructing the machine to do the work for them. It becomes difficult to distinguish the work that's being looked at, whether it comes from a computer or whether it's come directly from a human being. And the danger of that is that we can then regard computer art and, if you like, human art as being the same thing and that humans are nothing more than sophisticated computers. Machines work by logic, mm. you know, it's, it's mechanical logic. Uh, and, and the great human discoveries, you know, I suspect the scientific discoveries as much as artistic discoveries have always been an imaginative leap made by somebody. Mm. Ah!
surely there's something missing here. Surely when a human being produces a work of art, there is something coming from his, shall we say, soul. There is some sort of aspect of the human spirit there that we can't imagine being present in silicon. Well, that may be, but of course the interesting thing is that nowadays not many people really admit to believing in the human soul. If they're pushed, they will say that human beings are simply machines. And therefore, why shouldn't a machine made out of silicon end up just as complicated and just as powerful as a human artist? There is no point in building a machine with the intelligence of a man, since it is easier to construct human brains by the usual method. We should therefore build a machine that can far surpass all the intellectual activities of any man, however clever. The computer manufacturers, the technology manufacturers, are selling us an idea of a super being who will be better than all of us and any of us. Yeah. And that's, that's frightening. I'm sure it'll happen. There'll be a computer that will that's actually think for itself. That's what they want. They will recreate man in his own image. It's God creating himself. We no longer believe in God, or lots of people don't. So we want a new God. And the new God will be a computer that will tell us exactly what it wants to tell us and will never grow old. I think that what computers do in the arts isn't the most important item on your agenda. But music, painting and poetry have always been the most human of our activities. If the machine has taken over here too, perhaps computing Professor Marvin Minsky got it right. He believed that very soon we'd be able to program computers first with thoughts and then with feelings and emotions. The result? His words, not mine. We will have a machine which will be able to read Shakespeare, grease a car, play off his politics, tell a joke, have a fight. At that point, it will begin to educate itself with fantastic speed. In a few months, it will be at genius level, and a few months after that, its power will be incalculable. He thought that when we built it, it might want to keep us on as pets. Hmm. Doubt it.